Hello and welcome. Now that you've gone through the basics of setting up a course in Skillshare, you'll want to know how you can both increase your income and get exposure to your profile as well as your existing courses. And so this course will walk you through some of the internal methods that you'll have in terms of promoting your course, such as building your following, as well as other methods such as SEO. We'll discuss the setup to building your list and setting up your home base or WordPress website. And we'll effectively deal with the question of whether or not you should repurpose your content for other platforms. So the goal of the course will be to help you to build more strategies that you can use in order to build your following, to increase the number of people who are watching your courses, as well as to increase the number of people who are purchasing premium memberships. Now Skillshare is a different kind of platform as you can see. It takes a lot of understanding apart from the traditional way of marketing a platform. However, we'll be revealing those strategies to you in this course. Now Skillshare makes its money from the premium membership. So just as you are encouraged to sign up for a membership, so are others. And whenever someone signs up for a membership, you get a $10 referral fee. Of course, now the other way for you to be paid is to earn royalties. And that means that the number of people that are watching minutes in your course will help you to multiply the amount that you'll get every month. That means then that one of the best ways for you to multiply your income will be that you will be able to multiply the number of courses that you're teaching. That means then that what you're trying to do is you're trying to be discovered in the section where you have an area of expertise and where people are searching. Skillshare publishes a Google Doc that shows you the in-demand class topics in the platform. So for example, if your area of expertise is business, there are a number of subjects that are available that are popular and up and coming. And so you'll want to pay attention to these subjects and you'll want to think about where your area of expertise intersects these subjects. And of course, as a platform, Skillshare goes wider than just business subjects. Again, if your area of expertise falls within these subjects or subjects like the ones listed in the document, you can create courses and have some expectation that individuals will be able to find it. Of course, when you choose additional courses, you're going to want to balance this against the things that you place in your profile as well as the brand that you're building. Because you're going to be bringing in students into a certain kind of course, if you have related courses, you're likely to be able to have them watch some of your other videos if they like the course that they sign up with you for initially. When we have this discussion, we are mainly talking about premium course creation. We're not talking about free courses because these are the courses that we want individuals to watch, obviously, so that they will count toward our royalty minutes every month. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the ways you can attract individuals outside of the platform to the platform, either to view your courses or the Skillshare platform as a whole is to create a free course. And if you go inside of your course, we're just going to click edit inside of this draft course. And you go inside of the class info, you scroll all the way to the bottom of your description and you'll notice that you can determine the class type. What you're going to do, you are going to make your course free. Now the logic behind creating a free course is not to get people to watch more of your premium courses until they've met you. And so this is primarily going to be for people who have not met you or who have not met up with the platform. And when you couple this with the side-by-side -side nature of all of your other courses, you are going to be able to get some individuals that are going to watch some of your videos of some of your other courses once they've seen your free video. And you'll see a number of search results with individuals looking for free courses to put inside of their blog posts. And then those blog posts, which are often ranked, end up bringing you people interested in a certain subject. And this brings us back to finding those very popular subjects and up and coming subjects that Skillshare has determined and using these in order to get people interested in your other courses. 
And to do that, of course, you wanna stay inside of the general area where all of your paid courses are, but you wanna use the popular courses in order to attract people into the platform so that they'll either sign up or they would then get interested in your course. Now, although individuals are not going to always be looking for Skillshare courses, they're often looking for free courses. And if you can make one of these lists and be included for your particular area of expertise, this can bring people to your channel and the rest of your paid courses. In this video, we're going to talk about the course calendar and signaling your future courses on the Skillshare platform. Now, Skillshare does not have a calendar of future courses or things that are coming soon. It does promote the courses of individuals in its new teacher challenge, but those are not for existing teachers. And so you may have seen these courses on its blog, but if you look carefully, you'll see that these are individuals as part of their teach challenge, and they are mentioning this in their newsletter. Now that means then that you're going to want to tease out your future courses by making sure that your current students know about when they're going to be. And the best practice for Skillshare instructors to do that is to create courses in sets or series and in cases where you have longer courses, you could consider breaking those courses up into parts. Then release each part as a separate course, as a series, and then do that on a schedule. Of course, when you do that, you want to consider the schedule being on the same day at the same time of the week, and basically a time where you might say that your course is going to release every other Monday starting with part two. So that people know they're going to get the additional parts except they're going to be part of a future course. And what this does is that allows you to create a sense of anticipation with your students. As opposed to coming to one course and going through the whole thing, they're going to start anticipating the next part. It also allows you to link to different courses inside of your course description area once they've already begun. So for example, it's perfectly permissible inside of your class description to write about the next parts of the course or the parts that are going to be connected to the one they're currently in, and then to use your hyperlink in this case to link to those new parts. And then of course, what you'll then do is then you'll write down when the next part is going to be anticipated or on the date at which it typically comes out. In this video, we're going to be discussing building your follower base on Skillshare. And basically, you're building this follower base so that you can increase course watchers who will increase the number of minutes that you will be assigned to every month. So the strategy is to increase the number of minutes watched by building your follower base. And followers are notified whenever you post a new class or discussion in Skillshare. That's why it's important. Now you can build your follower base effectively by asking students to follow you in your intro or closing videos. This is perfectly permissible, even though they prefer that you do not do much self-promotion. Promoting yourself within Skillshare is perfectly acceptable. Now another strategy that you can use is to survey those that follow you, take your courses, and then create the courses that are requested. Another way to increase your following is to do an AMA or ask me anything for them. What you will do is when you are logged into your account, you'll head over to the AMAs page. And to start an AMA, what you'll do is you'll click create. Then you'll be able to give your AMA a title, you'll be able to set the time, and then you'll be able to give some details about the AMA. And when you publish this, this is going to be made available to those that you are following. So all you'll need to do is click this save and publish button. And then on the date, individuals will be able to ask you a question and you'll be able to answer it live. And what you'll need to do then is you will need to then keep refreshing the page in order to continue the AMA. Now you can keep your followers engaged by using the post to all followers message and starting discussions. You can find that link by going to your teach menu and then clicking this link that says post to all followers. Then you'll be able to create a discussion here in this area. You can then click email to all students so that everyone will get it. Now, the goal here is not necessarily to be fully self-promotional, but it is to keep your students engaged and connected. 
Finally, one of the things that you can do to encourage other people to follow you is when you're sharing about your channel or your courses, you want to share your channel link. And to do that, you're going to go to your profile area. You're then going to click view profile. And then the URL you see when you get to this page is the one that you're going to share. Then when people see this page, they'll have the follow button available to them to click. Now, in some cases, the courses that you create will be findable not only on the Skillshare platform, but they'll also be available in search. And you will see Skillshare courses come up in search for certain terms so that when a person is looking for something specific, it's quite possible that they can find your course provided that you have the right kind of optimization. Now, the best optimization that you can possibly do is to make sure that you have accurate keywords and the kind of keywords that people are searching for. So, for example, one of the things that you can do when you find your topic, you can scroll all the way to the bottom at a particular Google search and then you'll see eight related phrases. And in some cases, if you can use some of these phrases in your course description as well as your tags, this will help you. Another factor to use will be Google Suggest. So if you start by typing in the first few words of your topic, what you'll see are related searches that have been done recently by individuals using the Google platform. And you may very well find a keyword there that is going to be relevant and that will help you again to be found for a term that people are searching for. Now because we're using video, it's relevant for us to also look at the suggest terms for YouTube. So we can type in our phrase and we can see what kind of videos have been recently searched for inside of YouTube that again, they give us clues as to what kind of keywords will be relevant when it comes to our descriptions and our tags. We can also look for keywords inside of Google AdWords. What we will do is to go to Tools, Billings, and Settings. Then we will go to Keyword Planner. Then we will enter our phrase. We'll then click Get Started. We'll then see our keyword as well as other relevant keywords ranked by number of monthly searches if we want to rank it that way or ranked by what someone's willing to pay to advertise on that term. And we can use this section in order to gauge interest in a particular keyword and then we can prioritize which ones we're going to put in our description and our tags and title. And where this is going to make the most difference is going into your course description. Once you're in, you want to go to the class info. And you want to make sure that, again, your title has the right level of keywords, your description especially, and even your project if you can. What you're going to do also then is try to tag the right kind of skills also. Now, when you created your profile, you probably placed in a website. And that website is one where you might keep all of your activity. If you don't currently have a website, you'll want to have one because you will want to use it to try to build your email marketing list as another way of marketing. So the best way to do that is going to be to create your own WordPress self-hosted website. You are going to want to have a domain name, which you can get from a company like GoDaddy. You can also get your hosting from GoDaddy, or you can get it from another company if that is what you are more comfortable with. Once you enter your domain and hosting control panel, you'll typically find a program like Fantastico or Softaculous. When you do that, you're going to want to go to the blog section and you're going to just go to the WordPress section and open up a new WordPress site. When you do that, you're going to click install a new copy. You're going to want to determine the directory that you want the site to be in. And then you're going to give them some details like username, password, and then the administrator email. You want to give the website a title, although you can always go back and change it. And in some cases, you'll have some options to secure the site. Once you've done all that, you'll then click submit. Now, once your WordPress site is up and running, you'll be able to customize the appearance by changing the theme. You'll be able to customize the functionality by using plugins. 
You'll be able to create updated information by using posts. You'll be able to create permanent information by using pages. But one of the most important aspects of this is going to be that we're going to use this site in order to help us to generate leads and to build our email marketing list. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to customize this page so that it points people to the places where we want them to go. And as of right now, we know for certain that we want other people to see our Skillshare profile. So we're going to go into this theme and we're going to go to the widgets. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these sidebar items out of the view of the customer. So now we've taken all of the sidebar items out. So now let's take a look at our page. Now you'll see all of those items on the right side are no longer there. So what will we put there in its place? We're going to give our visitors the opportunity to see our Skillshare profile. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to move a text box into the sidebar. You'll notice it's going to open up into this box. And so we're going to now get the link for our profile. And we're going to give this text a title. We're going to now create the link. We're going to put the URL in. We're going to click Save. And we're going to click Done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our front page. We're going to take a look. We're going to scroll up. And we'll see now our link to our new location. And now when someone comes to this site and they click on this link, they'll be taken to our profile. So for the individuals who are not on Skillshare but come to our site, they'll get access to our new Skillshare profile. However, for those who come from Skillshare, what we want to do is we want to give them the opportunity to become part of our email marketing list. And we will be talking about that in a separate video. In this video, we're going to be discussing branding on Skillshare. Your brand on Skillshare is tangible and quantifiable as it results in how students behave on the platform. Remember, the Skillshare business model is that you will get referrals, but primarily you will get royalties from people who watch your videos over and over. So your brand on Skillshare may or may not necessarily be the same as your business brand. It really does depend on what students return to Skillshare over and over to experience from your courses. When it comes to uniqueness, the people that come back over and over again are the ones that will spell out what is unique that you have that perhaps another teacher does not. So there are things that you can do when you find out which of your courses is performing. Now you want to consider keeping things like course length, course delivery and course category, course discussions, and even the layouts, especially as you discover that your students like those things. You want to be consistent in areas of student feedback and discussions. And also, you want to consider keeping a consistent look to your thumbnail so that when visitors see your courses, they'll be attracted to them in multiples. And you'll see some of those principles in some of the course instructors that Skillshare chooses to highlight. And you'll see the consistent look at this teacher's page. And the same thing is true with this teacher. You'll see a consistent look. You'll see a consistency in what she's teaching. You'll see the same with this portrait artist who's also teaching on Skillshare. And you'll see these principles at work again with this instructor. So while on the one hand you want to be creative, on the other hand you want to find out what's working, what people are looking for, and then you want to be consistent in delivering that to people, especially as you look to attract them into your courses. Now in this video we are going to be talking about graphics. In the last video we talked about using your graphics as part of your branding strategy. Now depending on how you intend to promote your course, you'll want to have an entire set of graphics created. Now you can hire out a designer to create the graphics for your Skillshare projects on Upwork, you can hire them out on Fiverr, or you can hire them out on the Warriors for Hire section in the Warrior Forum at thewarriorforum.com. Now when you go to these designers, here's what you should do. 
you should be negotiating for one consistent design with the PSD files for banner graphics which fit interchangeable e-covers. You want to get the graphics for all of your social media channels such as YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, iTunes, and any other one that you use. And basically you're going to reuse these graphics, change out the images and colors when you have a new course and replace them with new e-covers. Now this is a very simple to operate graphic system which could be made more complex when your Skillshare business is more profitable and you start to hire out more accomplished designers more often. Now in order to do this, you are going to need to have a graphics program that can manipulate PSD files. Now if you don't own one and you don't find one that you're looking for, you can get a Photoshop subscription for less than $10 monthly. We are now inside of Photoshop. We have a Photoshop document or PSD file that is a consistent design. So you'll look to see that the light green and the blue is the design that we can carry over into all of our different social profiles. We can carry over from product to product. What we can do is we can change out the bundle. We can change it back in and we can change it out. So every time there's a new course, we change in the new product and we use that in order to promote the new course. But we keep the consistent design. And so when we go to our designer, we can have a consistent system created just like this one. And then with each course, we will switch it out for a new e-cover. And as you can see, when we have a new image or a new product, we simply add in the new PSD or we add in the new image. And we continue to use the design over and over again to stay consistent. Back now in this video, we're going to be discussing promotion on Facebook. Now, Facebook always undergoes significant changes every so often. So you don't want to rely on marketing with your personal profile that will not necessarily last in the long term. You really want to try to use one of the business avenues that Facebook outlines for you. You want to have someone to give you a boost and that typically comes in the form of a viral conversation. And you want that viral conversation obviously to revolve around your area of expertise. This means that you want to have either a Facebook group or a page dedicated to your general topic area. When you engage in discussions, you want to have a context so that you can bring up the fact that you're going to be launching a new course. Maybe it's on the discussion, maybe it's on something, but in general, if you have a group that centers around a topic, you have then the latitude to continually bring up new courses. What you want to do is you want to have different ways of delivering content and to give to the people in the group. So obviously if you want to get them excited about what you're doing in your Skillshare course, you want to do things like have live training or using Facebook Live. Now in the general operation of the group, you want to find ways of generating interest on Facebook within your group without linking outside of the system. So you want to keep outside links to a minimum. Your algorithm in that case works for you when you encourage people to stay on the network, especially as you operate your group. Now, if you're trying to choose between a group or a page, here's something to think about. Starting a group is advantageous as you will be able to screen out those people that don't really necessarily want to be interested in the niche. They won't just be liking the page just to like it. Once you get people inside of a group, then the goal then is to start a discussion that'll go viral within that group you know, as they have already self-selected as being and remaining interested in your niche. Now creating a group is pretty easy inside of your profile. What you're going to do is you're gonna to go to the groups and then when you get to this page, you're going to click create a group and then you're going to create the group around whatever your topic area is. In general, what you want to have is a closed group, and this will require people to request to be part of the group. They won't be able to become part of the group automatically, so you'll want to then click Create. Once you do that, you'll want to select an icon, and then your group will be ready for personalization. Now, if you've already created your branding, you'll be able to use that branding in this area and upload it to your Facebook group. Clicking this link will allow you to create an event 
where you can do a live training. And any of these posting areas will allow you to start a discussion. Now you want to briefly take a look at your group settings. You'll want to give your group a type. You'll want to write in a description here, as well as your tags. Now, when you link your page, what you'll want to do here is you'll want to link in your Skillshare profile page because that is where people will find out about your courses as they are being updated. And you'll also want to link to areas where they can follow you on Skillshare. You'll want to make sure that you're the only one that can approve membership. And one of the things that you can do to make sure that people are interested is you can give some people automatic approval by selecting groups that they are already a part of. So in other words, if you know someone's a part of a certain group and they'd be a good fit for your group based on what you're covering, you can select those groups in this area. And of course, what you can do is you can set up questions for people to answer, although you don't want to put too many barriers up between people joining your group while they're interested. So this may or may not necessarily be a good thing to do, but it may be something that you'll want to test. Now, these last three items are going to be things that you'll want to determine based on the group activity, whether or not you want to give posting permissions to everyone, you probably do and post approval. So if you have this box unticked, that means then that your posts in the group will not need to be approved. That means that your group members posts will not need to be approved by you. And then your story posting permissions, you wanna make sure that you either have anyone in the group or just yourself. And you can, as a backstop, make sure that the posting is going to be right by making sure that you're the only one that can approve them. Now, one of the venues that you can promote your Skillshare courses is going to be YouTube. And if you have a channel, there are going to be some things that you'll want to pay attention to. And specifically, in the basic course, we talked about having your promotional videos on YouTube and using it in that way. But the success of that promotional video will probably depend on whether or not you are able to pick up YouTube subscribers. In other words, that video will only make sense to people who are already subscribed. They'll be interested in what you're launching. They may not be looking for a Skillshare course per se. So when you promote that video to your subscribers, you want to already have people who are interested in your area of expertise. That means then that when you do your promotional video, you want the link in the description for those videos to link direct to your course link in Skillshare. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do your channel link, but in this case, when you're doing a specific course and you're promoting that course using your promotional video, you want to make sure there's a direct link to the course. Now, you can also, though, use YouTube to generate leads to attract people onto your email marketing list, and this is probably going to be most effective in the long term. These are going to be the people that you will eventually market to by email and tell about your specific Skillshare courses. Now, to attract these people, you'll want to make sure that your video content on your YouTube channel is geared to attract individuals looking for information and solutions about specific problems in your niche. And in the description area of those videos, you can link to your opt-in page on your site. Your channel should be branded with the graphics discussed in the previous video. So these are the graphics that you had outsourced. Those graphics are interchangeable, but you will have common elements that you'll be using with your other channels. Now, each of your videos should be keyword optimized in the title. So in other words, you want to assume that this title is going to be ranked on a search engine. And so if that's the case, well, what title would people be searching for? What would make them want to click if they saw it in a search engine? What kind of tags would also lend to that effort? And then what in the description would lend to that effort? So in other words, again, you want to make sure that the title, tag, description, they're all consistent with the search that people might do in order to find content that you're creating in this course. One thing that you can also do on your YouTube channel that is unique is you can do a live broadcast to launch your new Skillshare course to your subscribers. In other words, you can do a YouTube Live or Google Hangout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside of our channel. We're going to go inside of our Creator Studio. We get inside of our Creator Studio, we're going to go to the live streaming area. 
And when we get to that live streaming area, we're going to click events. And then we're going to click new live event. We're going to give that live event a title. Now, one thing you'll want to notice is that when we record this live broadcast, it will appear as a video after the fact. So we will create the video, but it will end up on our channel. So we want to keyword optimize the title and the description and the tags in the very same way that we would if it were a recorded video. And you'll notice that there is a Google Hangout set up. In order to start the broadcast, all you need to do is to click start broadcast, and then you'll be able to do the training based on whatever parameters you want to discuss. And then once the training is over, this will then become a video on your YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing promotion of your content on Pinterest. Now, Pinterest is image-based, and there's several that you'll have associated with your Skillshare courses. Now, Pinterest will allow you to link back to specific locations online from the image. So if someone's curious about the image, they click onto it, they will be able to link back to where you direct that link to go. You will also be able to pin videos inside of Pinterest. It's a unique aspect to the social network. And you can pin your promotional video to Pinterest also. Now again, the, the key to this is really getting someone to be curious about what it is that you have to offer. So Pinterest is going to take time for you to cultivate some kind of following around a topic or around your area of expertise. But if you are specifically promoting your Skillshare channel, you can focus your attention on Pinterest to a narrow number of individuals. So you don't have a lot of followers, that'll be fine because you're only focused on a specific niche. You want to consider posting something that is the result of taking your courses so that if someone is curious, they'll want to click through and find out more. So that's what you want to think about when you post images. What kind of image would make someone curious to click beyond it? What would make them want to share this pen with their friend? And so it's not just a matter of placing your ads or placing your graphics there. You want to make sure that you're posting something that would get people interested. And one specific graphic that you'll be able to use was suggested in the basic course, and that's to create graphic-based testimonials and then post them also. And so to post to Pinterest, you will have created some kind of board relevant to your topic area or relevant to your audience. When you click inside of that board, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to create a pen, and you're going to do that by clicking this button. And then you're going to upload the image from this area. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that this pin is keyword optimized and then you want to add in the link that you want this pin to be clicked on and take people to. Now this is going to be a case where you want to consider whether or not you're going to send people direct to your Skillshare course or direct to your Skillshare profile. So once you've written in your keyword optimized title as well as the place where you want people to be directed, you can then click done. You're then going to choose a board where you want it to be. Once you do that, then this pen will then be directed to this particular board. And you'll notice then when the individual hovers over this image, it goes to your Skillshare profile. Now you could have sent them direct to your Skillshare course if you have the image associated with it. In this video, we're going to briefly make a distinction between Instagram and Pinterest. Instagram is also an image-based place where you will be promoting the course. And even though it's image-based, it doesn't allow you to directly link back to online from the image. And with Instagram, you will be able to capture and upload videos and images. However, neither images nor video can be uploaded from your PC. Now, your video can be a maximum of 60 seconds, and it must be in your mobile device library in order for you to access it with Instagram. Your image must also be part of your image library on your mobile device. Now, with an Android or a Windows device, you can move the content from your PC to the mobile device through a USB port or the visible drive. With an iOS device, the content can be moved from your PC into your iCloud to be used by your library. With Instagram, you can do a particular kind of post where you can have up to 10 images and videos inside of the one post, and that can make for a unique method of promotion. 
Again, one of the best practices remains to post testimonials of your students in graphic form with an easy to follow link back to your Skillshare profile. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be discussing whether or not you should be using other platforms. And it serves as a reminder at this point that for YouTube, you do not want to upload the very same content that you have on Skillshare onto YouTube because one of the rules specifically states that you cannot place content that you have for free on Skillshare. The one place online that individuals sell their digital products is ClickBank. Now, ClickBank is primarily for those that are looking to build their business by recruiting affiliates. So this is going to be someone who wants to sell an actual course. Another network, primarily for the business opportunity niche, is JVZoo. They're very similar in scope to another network, Warrior Plus. Both of these networks are designed for individuals that want to sell their courses and digital products and recruit affiliates in order to help them sell. Now, Thinkific is a platform. It is not a network. So there will not necessarily be other related courses that you're going to be seeing. You will want to make sure that you have a network and that you have the ability to get people to your courses. And the same thing is going to be true for Teachable. Now, about as close in design to Skillshare as there is a platform is Udemy. Now, Udemy actually does sell and market courses. So they're not marketing their platform. When you come to Udemy, you can sign up to the platform for free, but you'll be taking courses and paying for individual courses. So the goal of promotion in Udemy is to get people to buy an actual course. So because of the nature of this network versus Skillshare, you want to be careful about putting content that you're going to have on Skillshare on Udemy because a person can join Skillshare and get access to all the content that they want and all the courses they want for one fee. If you sold the same course on Udemy separately, you may have an issue with an individual who is using both platforms. So again, just some things to keep in mind to decide whether or not you're going to use multiple platforms, at least for the very same content. The prudent thing to do would be to create different courses for Udemy than you would for Skillshare. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the inside of GetResponse, and GetResponse is an email marketing service company. And we are going to then connect our GetResponse to our home base or our home website. And the reason we're going to do that is because Skillshare does not have a direct connection to help us to build our email marketing list. Therefore, we're going to need to put it on our website so that we can ask individuals to go over and so that they can sign up for our opt-in list. So to do that, what we're going to need to do is to create a form. And regardless of which autoresponder company you use, you're going to have to create a form for one of your email marketing lists. So we're just going to select one. We're gonna select the one right in the middle here. And we're going to save and publish this list. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get all of the code. Now again, this may look differently inside of your autoresponder company, but what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get the code to put inside of your website. In particular, we're going to focus on our WordPress website in this case. So we're going to hit the copy button. We're going to copy all of this text and then we're going to head over to the WordPress website. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this form in our sidebar. So we're going to click the widget button. And we open up the widget button. What we're going to do is we're going to put the form on our sidebar. And to do that, we're going to put in our HTML box. And we're going to put it under the one that we have there. And we're going to put in our code. We're not going to title it. We're just going to click save. And we're going to click done. Now we're going to take a look at our front page. And you'll see now that the form that we designed in our get response is now ready to collect names and email addresses. 
and we're going to need to go one more step for our Skillshare business. What we're going to do is we're going to create a specific page and we're going to go and create that page by clicking add new and we're going to write in here Skillshare. You can title the page really whatever you want. What we're going to do now is publish this page. And we're going to publish the page because we want to look at the page to see if our form is going to be in the sidebar. So in this case, our form is not in the sidebar. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make this entire page nothing but our opt-in form. And so to do that, we're going to edit the text side of WordPress. We're going to place in our code. We're then going to center that code, and then we're going to click update. And now we're going to look at our page again. So now our page is ready to collect names and email addresses. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that page, and we're going to take this URL. We're going to copy that URL, and now we're going to head back to Skillshare. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our profile, and we're going to click view profile and what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and edit our profile and we're going to edit our website and we're going to edit our website now so that it goes directly to our opt-in page so that when people get curious about our profile and they click on our website they're going to be taken to our page so that there's no other decision to be made other than to opt in so we're now going to click save and exit now we could decide that we only want this website to serve one function, and that's to collect leads for our Skillshare business. And if that's the case, all we'll need to do is to go to the settings area, and then we'll click the reading tab. We open up the reading tab, what we're going to do is we're going to change this display to a static page. We're going to change this now to our Skillshare page. We're going to click save changes, and now what's going to happen is that when someone puts the URL in, it's going to go direct to that page. So when we go visit our website, it's going to be taken directly to our opt-in page. So now what's going to happen is that when individuals come to the site, they're automatically going to be taken to our opt-in page. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You can join the Skillshare affiliate program without being a teacher or without being a student. What the individual has to have is a channel, which is a blog or a Facebook group or some kind of social media account or even an email newsletter. They must also have some evidence of an audience aligned with Skillshare's brand. And what's going to happen is that the individual is going to have to create an account through a company called Impact Radius. And they'll also need to have, at minimum, a free Skillshare account. And affiliates earn $10 for every new sign-up. Now, when you click the Join button, you're taken to Impact Radius. You're going to click Apply to Campaign. And you're going to put in all of the information, proving that you have those factors that Skillshare pointed out. You'll then need to write in information about your business and your website. You'll want to make sure that you download their terms of service and you can get that right here at this link. We are going to continue on. However, the most advantageous way of being able to refer new people to the Skillshare platform will be as a teacher because you also get the royalties of people watching your videos and you can be paid through PayPal. So the affiliate network is a way for you to work with Skillshare if you do not want to be a teacher or if you don't want to be a student. However, once again, the most optimal way to experience revenue will be one of those two avenues, student or teacher. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we want to cover an offline method of being able to promote your course. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're gonna go inside of this area and then what we're going to do is we're going to go and get our class referral link. And so we're going to copy this entire referral link. What we're going to do then is we are going to then find a QR code generator. 
You can typically find these free if you just do a Google search for QR code generator. We're going to find one that is free. We're going to go right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in the text, which is our URL. And once we have it, we are then going to get our QR code generated. And to do that, all we'll need to do now is to download our code. We can save it as various different kinds of files. For the sake of this video, we're going to save this as a PNG file. What we're going to do now is we're going to get a tear off flyer template. And we're going to custom design a template for us to put flyers in various places offline so that we can create an easy way for individuals to use their mobile device to scan the QR code and be taken directly to our course where they can sign up. We're then going to click edit the document. And so now we've altered the template, we've made our QR code available, we placed our title, and then we have a scannable place where they can tear off the sheet and then scan their mobile device and be taken directly to our course where they'll either sign up for a Skillshare account or they'll be able to sign up for the course. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You are now looking at SlideShare.net. SlideShare.net is one of many document sharing sites that you can use in order to link back to either your course or your course profile. In fact, if you were to search document sharing sites, you would see that there are over 200 popular document sharing sites that you can use and upload content to link back to your site. Now you can create the document sharing content while you create your actual video. And in Camtasia, what you can do is you can create different screenshots of the content while you're creating the course. So when you come to a point during your editing process and you see a key place where you need to display something, you can stop the cursor and then you can hit the Control F button. And what we can also do in Camtasia is we can annotate this particular slide. So what we can do is we can add in a call out. And so now when we take this slide, what we can do is now hit Control F and then we can hit the number five and we will now have our annotations in there. Since we have saved the recording, we can now go back and delete these annotations because they will not be part of the recording. They will only part of the images that we are creating for the document sharing sites. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a new PowerPoint presentation. We're then going to go and click insert. We're going to click the photo album link and we're going to click new photo album. We're then going to access the directory where we save the image files and we're going to grab all of the files and we're going to click insert. What we're going to do now is we're going to determine how they're going to come into the PowerPoint. So we're going to change the layout to one picture with title. We're going to leave the rectangle frame shape. We're going to choose the theme. And in this case, we're going to choose the office theme. And then we're going to determine which pictures are going to go in. And then we're going to click create. And now we have a PowerPoint document, each one with a slide that we can now use to put into our document sharing site. Now, in some cases, we may need to save one of the documents or one of the pages as a PDF. We can place it as a JPEG file and we can now manipulate the data. Now we have it into our PowerPoint presentation. We can begin to use it to get it into the format that we want. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in order to repurpose your content for either Kindle or Create Space or some kind of text-based content, you will need to get your content transcribed. And there are lots of transcription companies. One in particular is called REV, and their cost is $1 a minute. 
There are also machine-based transcription services that you can upload your content and you will pay 20 cents per minute for those. Now, obviously you're gonna to have to work with that content with the human transcription. You will then expect that this will be done correctly. However, one of the things that you'll note is that if you submit several files, then all of these services round up for each file. So if you have over 10 files and all of those files are three minutes and one second, then you'll be charged for four minutes in each case. So one of the things you'll want to do is you want to make the files ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our Camtasia here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put all of these videos on the timeline. What we're going to do is put the video on the timeline. And when we do this, what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the beginning. We're going to cut off the introduction for the first video. And then we're going to add in second video. We're going to put it at the end. But then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut off the introduction. Now we're just doing this arbitrarily, but you would know where the introduction would be in your video. So we're going to do the very same thing again. We're going to actually add this one to the timeline. We're going to add it to the very end. And then we're going to cut off the beginning. What we're now going to do is we're going to remake this entire video as one file. And so to do that in Camtasia, what we would do is produce the video, we produce it as an audio only file and an MP3. And then we would start the re-rendering process into an MP3 file. So now that we have our new audio, we can just choose the service that we want to use. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, we've been over several ways for you to get more exposure to your Skillshare profile and course, as well as to earn more revenue. But in closing, you'll want to stay connected to the Skillshare community by making sure that you are subscribed to their blog and that you're reading it on a regular basis, and that you are tuned in to their emails. As you can see here, there is a recent promotion for people who are teaching technology classes. Now, now, the individuals who will be part of this promotion will need to have been contacted. They'll be contacted by email. So again, you'll want to make sure that you do not miss emails like this where you can participate in a bonus and then have your royalties matched. And finally, there is a teacher referral bonus. So if you know of individuals who would be good teachers for Skillshare, you'll want to refer them using the form inside of Skillshare. And Skillshare gives you a form to click, and then you'll fill in the name, information, and email. And then when that individual publishes their class, you'll get an additional $50 bonus in the following pay date. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.